In this box is an exciting new upgrade to my home lab. Now you may have seen my video where I upgraded to 40 gigabit networking and eventually declared it to be fairly pointless. However, due to my crippling inability to be content with what I have, I've purchased a 100 gigabit switch. But before you get all snarky with me, there are actually two decent reasons for it that we'll cover in a bit. Okay, so this is the Microtik CRS504 4XQIN. Well, it's not really in the box because I already put it in my rack. This switch comes with four 100 gig QSFP28 ports, an RJ45 PoE in port, and a console port. You also get dual redundant AC power inputs if you want to go that route. A good thing about this switch is that the max power consumption is only 41 watts, which isn't bad at all and prevents this thing from needing a super obnoxious fan. So aesthetically, it's a fine switch, but let's talk about the two reasons I actually bought it. Reason number one, within my home lab, I have three machines that each have a dual port 40 gig Connect X3 card. And those are set up in a goofy kind of love triangle where each of them is connected directly to each other and communicate on their own subnet and static IPs. I mean, this setup works. I just rather have these devices on the same subnet as my main network. So naturally, I'd need a switch to do this. Yeah, yeah, I know you've been a network engineer for like 60 years and there's probably a cleaner way to do this without a switch, but I, I just bought a switch. Surprisingly, outside of massive enterprise grade solutions, there aren't really many options for what I wanted, which is basically just a simple 40 gig switch with like four to eight ports. From what I found, there were just two options. The first was this eight port option that had six 40 gig ports and two 100 gig ports. You can get this from fs.com for $1,300, which seems like a reputable store and it looks like they put their own branding on it. Or you can buy the unbranded version on AliExpress for literally half the price. Then obviously the other option was this Microtik switch for around $650. The AliExpress deal would probably have been a better value, but from what I've heard and experienced when it comes to dealing with networking faster than 10 gig, I wanted something from a reputable brand. So clearly I went with the Microtik. Reason number two, my main workstation where I edit all of my videos and do all of my screen captures from is one of those three machines with the 40 gig networking. As I mentioned before, this is great for communicating with my other two 40 gig machines, but what about the rest of the network? Well, for that, I just use the 2.5 gig port built into the motherboard. The problem here is that when I want to test 10 gig devices in my network, I'm limited to just 2.5 gigs, so I have to use a separate machine just for that purpose, which is super annoying. Brett, are you dumb? Just put a 10 gig network card in. Yeah, I would if consumer processors allowed you to have more than like 20 PCIe lanes. After the 16 the GPU uses, I just have enough for that 40 gig card. This new switch will allow that single 40 gig connection to not only connect to my other 40 gig machines, but also back into the rest of my network. I told you I had semi-legitimate reasons for this. So in terms of setup, I'm running each of my 40 gig machines to three of the ports, and the last one is a backhaul to my Unify Enterprise XG, which has dual 25 gig QSFP plus ports. Now, one of the cool things about 40 gig, or in this case, 100 gig networking, is that I can break out a single port into multiple connections with a simple breakout cable. I have a 100 gig QSFP28, to four by 25 gig QSFP plus cable that I'm using to do this. You can even see in the switch interface that each port actually shows four separate connections. Speaking of switch interface, this guy runs router OS and this is my first time using it. Now there is a lot to cover in here and plenty of features, most of which I have no idea what they even mean. So this isn't gonna be a router OS video by any stretch, but let me just share how I had to set this part up. Now, if you're using this device as a switch, then it'll by default bridge all the ports and assign a default interface to use as the main bridge port. I initially set this up with PoE power, which caused the switch to use this as the bridge port, which I don't really want because it's only 100 megabits per second. I wanted that full fat 25 gig backhaul. Luckily, you can just find the MAC address of the port you're using 
And in this case, it was port four and sub port four. Then just assign that as the main bridge port and you're good to go. After that, I had a 25 gig backhaul from my 100 gigabit switch to my unified network. Well, not quite. After having the connection not work, I went into the settings and eventually found out that I needed to set the port's FEC mode to FEC 74. What this means, I really don't know. Go Google it. So with that, I was able to just plug in my 40 gig devices and have everything talking to each other. Well, obviously my 40 gig connections are different in that they're just using a single connection rather than the breakout cable. Apparently when this is the case, you just need to adjust the sub port one on the port that it's connected to. I went in, manually set the speed to 40 gig, set the FEC mode to 91, and then we were good to go. Everything was talking to each other and they were all on the same subnet. And now my workstation has 10 gig, well, technically 25 gig connection back to the rest of my network. To test the speeds between devices, I ran iPerf 3 and for some reason, I could only get about 26 or 27 gig, which may be the case for ethernet mode on these Mellanox cards. Let's be clear though, I still stand by 40 gig being pointless for 99.9% .9 of people, including myself. And that's because I use this as a way to speed up my connection for editing and file transfers. But if we look at a file transfer speed test from my workstation to my NAS, it's just barely over 10 gig speeds. This is most likely due to SMB limitations and file system overhead, but I mean, that's what I use it for, so that's what we get. Let me know down in the comments if there's a better and faster way to access my network files from my Windows machine. Anyway, all of that to show you that buying a 100 gig switch is not only overkill since I'm only using 40 gig cards, but it's also overkill since 40 gig itself is overkill for my use case. Honestly, I could probably just do away with the whole system and go back to regular old 10 gig, which is why I bought these. Two 100 gig Mellanox 5 network cards for my workstation and my TrueNAS server. Pfft, you thought I'd grown as a person over the course of this? Get real, let's go install these. So after getting both of the cards installed, I went into the UI of the switch, set both of them to negotiate at 100 gigabit per second. And just like that, they were connected both at 100 gig. And to test it, I ran another iPerf test and well, ah, this confirmed my biggest fear. So I was getting 32 gigabits per second and I'm gonna give you guys a guess at, um, what do you think the max speed of a PCIe Gen 3 card that's only getting 4X worth of bandwidth from the slot is? Yep, 32 gigabits per second. Of course, my motherboard only gets 4X worth of PCIe lanes at Gen 3 because that's what the card is, and the max speed is 32 gigabits per second. I should have known this. I should have done my research. In fact, I did know it. I even said it earlier in the video, but I just don't think sometimes, a lot of the times. But of course, I wouldn't leave you guys hanging. I know I've been edging you this entire time. You guys wanna see 100 gigabits per second, so I took the card out of my workstation and put it in the HL15, just so that I could get full 16X slot on both my HL15 and my main TrueNAS server. And after readjusting the ports, running an iPerf test, we finally made it nearly 100 gigabits per second of network speed between two of my servers. Now, was this the outcome that I was looking for? Obviously not. I wanted to get 100 gigabits per second from my workstation to my TrueNAS server, but that's not physically possible. And honestly, it's not even worth it. We saw earlier that the max speed I was getting on actual file transfers was 10 gigabits per second. So clearly it wouldn't even make sense for me to go and purchase like a thread ripper and a brand new motherboard and spend like $2,000 just to get extra PCIe lanes just so that I could run benchmark porn. That would be, that would be stupid, right? So anyway, what did we accomplish today? Well, I got 10 gig speeds from my workstation to the rest of my network and um, a new switch. 
But overall, honestly, uh, after spending nearly $1,000, I didn't get much out of this. That's okay. Sometimes you do things to learn. Sometimes you do things for fun. And sometimes you do them uh, to impress the ladies. Guess what? What? My home lab has 100 gig networking now. Oh, God. <laughs> Isn't that impressive? No. <laughs> okay, maybe not that last one, but hey man, I had a good time and maybe down the road, if I ever have a workstation with more PCIe lanes, we can revisit this. Okay, I was initially gonna end the video here, but I couldn't get over just how bad my performance was using these cards with SMB. Like, Windows is the most popular desktop operating system in the world, and its standard for network file sharing is SMB, so surely there's a way to get more performance. Well, turns out there is this thing called SMB Direct, which utilizes a technology called RDMA, or Remote Desktop Memory Access. Essentially, what this does is allows communication at the hardware level between two devices, which bypasses the operating system and the TCP layer to give you much faster speeds. For the most part, this is built into SMB on Windows and as long as you're running a compatible version of Windows and network cards that support RDMA, then you should be able to get this thing up and working. To give this the best chance, I set up two Windows Server 2022 systems, slapped the Connect X5s in there, enabled SMB Direct on both, created an SMB share on an NVMe pool, and tested our speeds. Look at that, nearly seven gigabytes per second, which comes out to around 55 gigabit. No, that's not quite 100 gig, but in this case, we're actually bottlenecked by the speed of the NVMe drive. How crazy is that? And you wanna see something even cooler? Since RDMA bypasses the TCP network layer, you won't even see it show up on your network activity. Don't worry, this isn't some editing trick or anything. We can see that we are in fact using RDMA by checking out the counters in the performance monitor. This is super cool and I'm praying that we get native RDMA support in TrueNAS soon. Supposedly, some people have gotten this working, but until it's officially supported, I don't think I'm gonna head down that road. This begs the question, is it worth setting up an all flash Windows SMB server just to get that juicy RDMA throughput? Let me know down in the comments what you think. But that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, then go ahead and drop a like. If you wanna see more content like this, then go ahead and subscribe. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my 100 gig networking with RDMA support and blazing fast SMB transfers. Y'all are the best. And if you're still watching, you're Infiniband. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.